So today what we're going to do is we're going to combine past and present. I saw Bengal do this a few days ago. And I thought it was really cool to add one legend to every current roster in the MLB. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm not going to pick the most popular or the most famous or like the best player of all time for each team. I'm going to pick one that kind of fits a glaring hole or a gap within the lineup for each team. So when we go through the rosters, we'll definitely talk about players that I miss out on. But I'm also going to talk about why I decided to go with that specific player. Because yes, I could have picked this guy or that guy but we'll talk about it in a sec so with that being said let's hop into the rosters and let's take a look at each team so like i said i didn't go with the most famous player but with the cubs i guess you could say i did decide to go with them um ernie banks as shortstop which means bias is going to move back to second i could have gone with ryan sandberg ron santo maybe even sammy sosa but i felt like with the cubs they already have outfield help um ryan sandberg could have played that second base position that the cubs kind of do have an issue with but i felt like ernie banks would have been a good choice for the cubs when we moved to the reds i decided to go with pete rose at second base yes they do have peraza yes they do have Derek dietrich but i feel like pete rose is a pretty good pick i guess i should show you the stats as well you guys can see the stats for ernie banks the shortstop first baseman third baseman for the cubs and then obviously Pete Rose, who was kind of a utility player, but mostly played kind of like the infield. And you guys can kind of see his stats here. But I decided to go with Pete Rose for the Reds. When we move on to the Brewers. I was stuck between two players for the Brewers, Robin Yount and then Raleigh Fingers. I decided to go with Yount just because Orlando Arcia is a good shortstop. But if you give the, the Brewers a really solid shortstop, I feel like they'd be a, a little bit of a decent team. Arcia just really hasn't filled that role yet. For the Pirates, I wanted to go with Roberto Clemente, that, or you could go with Willie Stargell, you could go Kiner, Mazeroski, but Honus Wagner kind of fits that hole right now. Cole Tucker's developing as a shortstop, but Honus Wagner is Honus Wagner. I felt like he was the right choice here. Next up, Stan Musial. Do the Cardinals really need outfield help? Maybe a little bit, maybe like a center fielder, maybe even a right fielder, even though Jose Martinez is kind of a glitch in franchise, but Stan Musial... I could have gone with Ozzy Smith. I could have gone with Boob Gobson. I could have gone with Pool Hulse, but I kind of wanted to avoid players that are currently playing. So I tried to I tried to stay away from like Pool Hulse or Miguel Cabrera, players like that. Next up for the Diamondbacks, we had to go with Randy Johnson. You can't go to the Diamondbacks and not pick Randy Johnson. I know there's other names, but Randy Johnson definitely is the man for the Diamondbacks. Next up for the Rockies, I decided to go with Todd Helton. Between Todd Helton and Larry Walker, but I felt like the outfield was okay for the Rockies, and um, Todd Helton fits that kind of hole that they have at first base. Daniel Murphy, Yonder Alonso, not really first base, but I'm looking to build a team around. For the Dodgers, I decided to go with Jackie Robinson, who can play first, he can play second, he kind of can play that whole infield, and I felt like, yeah, we could have gone with Sandy Koufax, and we could have gone with a lot of other players for the Dodgers, but it's Jackie Robinson, you kind of got to go there. For the Padres, Tony Gwynn kind of felt like the best option available. Yes, they have Hunter Renfro, but outside of that, when you look at their corner outfield spots, Hunter Renfro or Will Myers, I feel like Tony Gwynn's a little bit, just a little bit of an upgrade there, and it's Tony Gwynn. You got to you gotta be pretty happy with that. For the Giants, you can go Willie Mays. You can go with so many options, but you get Barry Bonds. Barry Bonds for sure. The outfield for the Giants... Yes, they do have Yastrzemski, Pilar, and things like that, but it's Barry Bonds. He's going to hit you bombs, and that's what you kind of need in franchise. Next up, Cal Ripken felt like the obvious choice for the Orioles. Um, it's just they need a shortstop now. Actually, they need a lot, but Cal Ripken, I felt like, was the best option. Next up, for the Red Sox, we could have gone Ted Williams, and there's so many other names you could go for the Red Sox. You go Boggs. You can go Pedro Martinez and so on and so forth and this and that and other players. But I decided to go with Big Poppy, David Ortiz, because they kind of do have an, a hole at first base. And David Ortiz kind of fits that spot. Huge power hitter. We're going to go with Big Poppy. Next up for the Yankees is another one. DiMaggio, Mantle, Lou Gehrig, so on and so forth. But we're going to go Babe Ruth. Not the pitcher version, the first base version. I feel like, yes, Luke Voigt's a decent first baseman, but Babe Ruth... I think is going to take you up another level even though he did play against plumbers you gotta you gotta admit he's a he's a power hitting first baseman for the rays 
not too many choices yes they're kind of a, a younger organization but it was between you could go zobris you could go longoria carlos pena is an option but like i said i kind of wanted to avoid players like zobris and longoria because they're still playing so i decided to go with carl crawford left field is a little crowded with tommy fam you have avasiel garcia even in right field you have austin meadows so it's a little crowded in the corner outfield spots but i felt like carl crawford was the best option for the race Next up with the Blue Jays, I decided to go with Roy Holiday. Yes, we could have gone um, Roberto Alomar. We could have gone Jose Bautista. We could have gone so many different Joe Carter. There's so many options. But again, I felt like Roy Holiday. They need a little bit of pitching help. This is probably the best option. You guys can take a look at his stats. Looks really solid. Next up, White Sox. I decided to go Frank Thomas. I know they have Jose Abreu. But when I look at the White Sox past players, I mean, you could look at AJ Pruszynski, maybe Mark Burley. Um, Shoeless Joe Jackson, but I felt like Frank Thomas, the big unit or the big hurt, was a little bit, a little bit of a, a good choice. Jim Tomey's going to be the Indians. I could have gone Bob Feller. Could have gone a couple other uh, directions with this, but Jim Tomey I felt like was a good option as well for the Indians. Good power hitter, and then they could always move Carlos Santana back behind the plate if needed. For the Tigers, they need a lot of help as well, but I felt Ty Cobb kind of fits an outfield spot that they need. In center field, he can also play all across the outfield. But Ty Cobb, I felt, was the best option for the Tigers. Yes, there's other names for sure. A lot of good Tigers players in history. Ty Cobb was the one I chose. The Royals, George Brett. Yes, they have Hunter Dozier at third, but you can't. Hunter Dozier is not a George Brett. So George Brett's gonna be our third baseman for the Royals. Next up, we got the Twins. There were names like Kirby Puckett, Joe Maurer, and things like that. But I decided to go with Rod Carew because yes, they have CJ Crone at first base, but Rod Carew could play that first base position, also second base, even though he doesn't have that secondary listed. I felt like Rod Carew with his contact, good abilities, would have been a nice little first baseman for the Twins. Next up with the Angels, Mike Trout is clearly the best Angel in history, but we can't have two Mike Trouts on a team. We could have gone Jim Edmonds, we could have gone Garrett Anderson, and there's a couple other aging players like Vlad and Nolan Ryan, but I decided to go with Tim Salmon. I felt like right field, maybe a little bit of an upgrade on Cole Calhoun. That's the option for the Angels. Next up for the A's, Ricky Henderson. Yes, we could have gone Catfish Hunter, Dennis Eckersley, and a couple other names. But I felt like Ricky Henderson with his speed and decent contact numbers. Pretty good left fielder for the A's. Next up for the Mariners, we could have gone each row. And trust me, there were other names I looked at. But we got to go with Ken Griffey Jr. out there in center. So he's going to be the center fielder for the Mariners. Rangers, we could have gone Adrian Beltre, a couple other names. But Nolan Ryan was the one that really stuck out to me. Um, they also do kind of need some pitching help. So Nolan Ryan's going to be the starter for the Rangers. And then the Astros, Jeff Bagwell. I know they have Yuli Goriel. I know they have Jordan Alvarez. But I felt like Bagwell would have been that good name. We could have gone Lance Bergman. We could have gone Craig Biggio. But with Altuve at second, I felt like maybe first base right now would have been an issue that we could have filled. The Astros are probably one of the most complete teams. But Jeff Bagwell at first decent option hank aaron for the braves it's hank aaron he's the home run leader if you don't count bonds but you got to kind of count bonds bonds is a home run leader but hank aaron's there fits that right field hole that i know marcakis is a really solid outfielder but hank aaron's just a step above that so the, for the Mar all right so for the marlins there was there were definitely some options here um i know another team that you know you could go a couple different ways a lot of you guys are probably going to be like why not Jose Fernandez, but realistically, Jose Fernandez really didn't play long enough. You could have gone Giancarlo Stanton. You could have gone um, Dontrell Willis. You could have gone Gary Sheffield. He had a couple seasons there, but I felt like Josh Beckett, MVP for the World Series, was really the guy to go with. Just a really strong pitcher, and I felt like he was the best option. You could have gone Hanley Ramirez as well, Miguel Cabrera. But we're going to go Josh Beckett for the Marlins. Next up for the Nationals, formerly of the Expos, Vlad Guerrero. It's Vlad. You can't, you can't think of the Nationals or the Expos without Guerrero. And then obviously I didn't show Josh Beckett's stats, so there they are. For the Mets, I thought about going Tom Seaver, but they have really good pitching already. Let's go with the third baseman, David Wright. I felt like he was a good option. A step above Todd Frazier and J.D. Drew. Um, 
or JD Davis, not JD Drew, JD Davis. And uh, so we decided to go with David Wright, um, solid hitting third baseman. And then for the Phillies, we went Mike Schmidt, third baseman, kind of a step above Michael Franco. So that's the team. Those are all the legends. I figured, you know what? It was pretty cool just to kind of throw one that would fill all the holes. We're gonna sim one season, see how it plays out. It was kind of cool just to kind of think of what other legends we could go with. So in the comment section, I want you guys to let me know who you would have chosen that was different than me because I felt like I did an okay job, but there's definitely some names I left out there. So again, guys, in the comment section down below, let me know which players you would have chosen that were different from my choices. So let's sim a season. Let's see if anything kind of helps teams out or hurts teams or how things play out. And I'll see you guys at the end of this season. Alrighty, so the season's over. Let's take a look at the league, see who won and things like that. So the Cubs clinched the central. The Pirates were actually second. Okay, Reds, Cardinals, and then the Brewers. When we head over to the West and the Dodgers are just too good. Um, they, wow. They really, they really ran away with the division there. Um, the wild card was the Braves and the Phillies. The East was the Yankees. Okay. Indians won the Central. The West was the Astros and the Red Sox and the Athletics. So not too different from real life. Uh, the Nationals won the East. So yeah, really not too different from real life at all. We'll take a look at some league leaders. Vlad Guerrero had the best batting average. Okay. And then Miguel Cabrera for the American League. Interesting. Uh, Jeff Bagwell's up there. Thomas. Hank Aaron is up there. Stan Musial. Honus Wagner. Let's take a look at like home runs and things like that. Any triples. Real Muto. Interesting. Carl Crawford for. Oh, wow. was 17. Home runs was JD uh, Martinez. I keep saying JD Davis. JD Martinez. Stanton Bagwell. Okay. Babe Ruth was up there, so he's proven he can hit um, not just plumbers, but real life pitchers as well. Tim Salmon's up there, Cal Ripken, okay. National League, Hank Aaron with 61, Ernie Banks with 55, and then Barry Bonds with 42. Interesting, interesting. Um, RBIs, Hank Aaron with the most, Ernie Banks with the second most, JD Martinez and Jeff Bagwell, Tim Salmon, okay. Stolen bases, Jackie Robinson with 51. D Gordon with 52, Ricky Henderson right behind him, Ty Cobb's up there, Carl Crawford, okay. Um, let's take a look at some pitching. Kershaw, Ryu, Hamels, Randy Johnson's up there, okay. And then, let's see, do we, I think we put one pitcher in the AL? Nolan Ryan, 15, okay. Um, saves, I don't think we did any closers. We definitely could have thought of like Mariano Rivera for the Yankees. Um, Trevor Hoffman for the Padres. Um, there's definitely a couple names that we could have done, but obviously we did not. So let's take a look at awards, see who won MVP. Hank Aaron was the MVP. Um, Ernie Banks and Juan Soto, okay. American League, Jeff Bagwell, JD Martinez, and Giancarlo Stanton. Hmm, okay. All right, Cy Young was Chris Sale, then Verlander, then Kluber. We have Randy Johnson, Kershaw, and then Hyunjin Ryu. Let's take a look at Randy Johnson's stats at the age of 37. Pretty nutty, pretty nutty. Um, batting title, okay. I mean, Vlad, I didn't even hit that many home runs, but he just had a really good year. Um, reliever of the year, okay, okay. Rookie of the year, obviously going to be the the players that were created. Hank Aaron, 61 home runs. He also had 31 doubles, six triples, 155 RBIs, a 328 average, and an 1110 OPS. That is a crazy season. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna just go into the postseason. We're gonna take a look at the, uh, the playoff bracket and stuff like that. Oh, actually we didn't even get the real awards then I guess, huh? Yeah, those were the real awards. It just showed who was in second and third and things like that. Okay, so here's the calendar for the playoff bracket. You guys can see the Braves are taking on the Cubs, the Phillies, and the Nationals are in the wild card to take on the Dodgers. Um, but yeah, it's kind of interesting. It's actually pretty, it's still pretty much the same. Not much has changed with each um, like new legend added. Obviously, the Tigers really aren't going to change with one new player. It's, a, it's kind of like everybody has to be good. So what we'll do here is we'll just sim through the end of the year. The Cubs obviously were eliminated, but the Red Sox defeat the Braves. Okay, um, so let's take a look at the awards. The Red Sox, JD Martinez, and Freddie Freeman. 
Okay, so the Braves, we added Hank Aaron. Obviously, Hank Aaron's going to make that team really good. They already have a really good team. But when you add that really good bat to the team, I have a feeling they're only going to get better. And then for the, the Red Sox, we added Big Poppy. Let's go take a look at Big Poppy's stats. See how he did for the Red Sox this year. 42 home runs, a 291 average. That's actually too not, not too bad. He actually had a pretty decent year. Um, actually a really solid year, really good year. And then we'll, we obviously already looked at um, Hank Aaron's year. Babe Ruth had 44 home runs, 114 RBIs. Carl Crawford had himself an OK season, 17 triples though. That's, that's pretty impressive. Next up was a pitcher for the Blue Jays. So we'll actually, we'll just do it this way. So we'll go, we'll go back to where we were at and we'll just kind of take a look and see how they did. Um, we've already looked at that. We've looked Carl Crawford. We did. Um, we'll take a look at Roy Halladay. How did he do this year? Pretty solid. 14 and seven, 326 ERA respectable. Frank Thomas, 35 home runs, 315 average. Okay. Jim Tomey, 36 home runs, 29 doubles, 259 average. Ty Cobb, 43 doubles, Whew, 38 stolen bases, 300 average. Georgia Brett had himself a pretty solid year as well. When we take a look at Rod Carew, not, I mean, obviously he's not a power hitter, but a 286 average is pretty solid with 40 doubles. That's, that's a good year. Tim Salmon, 38 home runs, 129 RBIs, 283 average, solid. Ricky Henderson, 50 stolen bases, um, 104 walks. 23 home runs, 40 doubles. Pretty good year. Pretty good year. Uh, Ken Griffey Jr. had himself a year as well. Nolan Ryan. What do we got here? 15 and 7, 328 average or ERA with a 117 whip. Jeff Bagwell, 47 home runs, 135 RBIs, 32 doubles, a 324 average, and a 1087 OPS. Whew. Good year. We've already looked at Hank Aaron's stats. Josh Beckett, pretty solid. <laughs> pretty solid year. Vlad, we've already looked at uh, David Wright. This is actually one I was kind of interested in seeing. 34 home runs, 25 doubles, 315 average. Okay, pretty good year. Mike Schmidt, pretty solid year as well. We have Ernie Banks for the Cubs. 55 home runs, 154 RBIs, 39 doubles. He, he, had, a, he had a top year indeed. Pete Rose, how many hits did he have? 168, 39 doubles. That's pretty solid. He's going to be your contact guy, and that's what he really was. Um, Robin Yount, what do we got for him? Okay year, not amazing, but he was only 85 overall, so I'm assuming he would only get better. Honus Wagner, 27 home runs, 46 doubles, pretty good average and on-base percentage. Stan Musial, pretty good year. 34 home runs, 36 doubles. Randy Johnson, we've looked at. His stats were just nutty. Um, Todd Helton, did the Coors effect kick in? 33 homers, 89 RBIs, and 23 doubles. And then we had Jackie Robinson, and pretty good year. 300 average, 51 stolen bases. Tony Gwynn, good, got 43 doubles. That's solid. 82 walks, 291 average. And then the final one, Barry Bonds had 42 home runs, 112 RBIs, and 31 doubles. So it's pretty interesting to see. We saw that the Red Sox it did defeat the Braves in the World Series. And it's just kind of interesting, kind of cool to see how one legend affects certain teams. It made the Braves a World Series contender. Obviously, it's only going to strengthen the Red Sox when you kind of plug that one hole, that first baseman and things like that. And it's just kind of cool to see how these players played in a sim style franchise. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, hit the like button down below. Subscribe if you're new to the channel and enjoyed the content. And let me know some other rebuilds you would like to see. Remember guys, in the comment section, let me know what other legends that I missed or that you would have added that were differently or that were different from the ones that I chose. Other than that, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.